Hello there and welcome back to Forza Horizon 4 and as you can see we've encountered our first case where we don't have a car suitable for this race. What we'd really like to see is something that's all-wheel drive but none of them have that so the next best thing is probably something with a bit of overhead to be able to upgrade. So we're going to go with the RS 1800. It's 88,000, not the cheapest. Now the unfortunate thing about buying the car through the race dialogue is you don't get to upgrade it or anything. We'll have to do that separately. So we're racing at stock. That's fine because everyone else is also stock. Hopefully because I chose a fairly low rated car, I can't remember what the minis were by comparison, that no one should have a clear advantage. We should have plenty of scope to catch up with everyone. So here's the classic case of muscle car versus mini. The fact that they are very nimble. I do love me a good mini, but we are much faster on these straight sections. Especially if I gave this a better gearbox so I had more than four gears, that would be nice. So that person does have a slight upgrade to their car because they have a splitter on the rear. That's interesting. I guess for the top couple of AIs, they probably do give them a little bit of an upgrade. Be interesting to see actually in the starting grid what the comparison is. But, because they were duking it out around the corner, we were able to just lean them together and slip by. And now we just need to hold it together and not slide all over the place. Thankfully, despite the brakes being pretty woeful, we're not really going fast enough in this for it to be too much of an issue. But because we're ages ahead, we're going to brake very conservatively for that corner, just to make sure that we get through. And then we've got this tricky section through here, but you can actually cut these corners pretty well. Go wide on this, brake, turn in, and then be able to get around for a good line to cut through this corner. And you've got a little bit of a runoff there. Yeah, a little bit of a tap. Sets you up for the next one as well. Bit of an off camber section there. And now we've got the really sharp one, so we slow right down. Missed the apex quite badly. But never mind. <laughs> it's a pretty straight run here to the finish, so we should have it pretty locked up. And sure enough, no challenges as we come down to the line. Now I would love to head to one of our houses and upgrade this, but the next race is right there. And because we won that last one pretty comfortably, I'm fairly confident in my ability to be able to see this one through as well. We did have a little bit of an off-road section at the end of the last race, and this one starts with the dirt section right here, so I've actually dropped the tire pressures down. I had them up slightly last time. Put them down to 1.8 instead of 2.2. That might make a little bit of a difference on the rough stuff here. We definitely would prefer to tune this car to be a bit more rally-oriented, give it some better suspension, give it some off-road tyres if we're able to. We've got a bit of an overhead within the D rank to do some work. Tyres though is often one that will bump you straight into C, sometimes even further. So I did actually observe at the end of the last race that the minis are only a 303 rating to my 310 or something, so it's pretty close, but we technically have a small advantage. They are definitely going to do better in these corners though. I am going to break quite conservatively for this. Make them all line up behind me <laughs> through the apex of that corner. But now we just have a 1-2 corner here and then another long straight down to that first 90 degree. So we've got plenty of chance to open up a bit more of a lead over everyone. As long as we got a decent exit out of that corner, which I think we did. Now because we dropped the tyre pressures, means that we didn't gain as much on the straightaway as we would have liked, especially with the little corner on it. It meant that we didn't quite have the same amount of traction as we might otherwise have had, but having the lower pressures does give us a little bit better grip through the loose section, technically, theoretically. Helps us to counteract the advantage that the minis otherwise have through that section. And then once we get onto the straight, the added power that we have over them 
despite the slightly less grip, just means that we can stretch out the lead even further. Halfway through, and we're well ahead. And fast forward another uneventful lap, and we're on the final lap, going through the final corner section. Once again, we're just going to brake really conservatively. We do have ABS, but I find that bouncing the brakes is better than locking up the tyres regardless. And that allows us to have a good couple of corners onto the final straight, ease on the power again. And I don't think we've got much to worry about. And it's here when you've got a rather comfortable car choice and you're doing well in a championship that you could increase the difficulty if you wanted to. Now unfortunately the next event is not so conveniently lined up as the last two were, but it does give us an opportunity to have a little bit of a drive and I'm going to swing past this player house opportunity up here. The guidebook says this magnificent stately home has presided over the south of Edinburgh for more than a century and is believed by many to be haunted. Um, let's just put that guidebook away, shall we? So this is one of the best houses in the game. Uh, it costs 2 million, but we've got 4.2 because we've been lucky with wheel spins and it also gives you 10 super wheel spins back, so you can honestly make your money back if you're lucky. It also allows you to fast travel anywhere, not just to player houses, not just to fast travel boards, literally anywhere. So you can drop yourself down at the next event with no lag time whatsoever, which is quite handy once you've already discovered everything on the map. Right, so now we have the ability to fast travel everywhere, but uh, I'm not going to because a lot of the streets that I'll be driving off to get to the race are new to me, and I do want to figure out whether or not there are more influence boards or fast travel boards, because that's the other kicker is, okay, you can fast travel anywhere now with that house, but you still have to pay for it. And I have managed to get over half of them, but it's still 4,600 each time that I want to fast travel. That does add up over time. But if there are things that you want to do en route, such as drive through the streets of Edinburgh in this case, because we've not been in this side of the town before, then it's still worth doing. In fact, there's a fast travel board right there. <laughs> Exhibit A as to why you might still want to drive places for the time being. Now obviously this isn't necessarily the vehicle that you would choose to go exploring further and driving between races in because it's a bit slow <laughs> compared to, I don't know, our Rimac for example. But it also gave us a chance to get a feel for the upgrades that we've made to the vehicle. We've boosted it right up to a 500 rating now. Now you can't make many changes in terms of power. You also can't make huge changes to the tyres for example. But there was a vintage race tyre that I've chosen which gave us a 0.36 I think increase in grip which is quite a lot. It was equivalent to the sport tyre otherwise. So we couldn't take off-road but anything is an improvement over the originals. We also changed the, uh, the wheels themselves that are lighter which is kind of useful for going faster. Gave it rally springs. We couldn't make any changes to the transmission. Well, I could have, but it was actually demonstrating it as being a downgrade on acceleration for some reason. But we did upgrade the clutch and the driveline. So that will have made a bit of a difference. It feels like we've gotten ahead a lot faster than we did previously. <laughs> About halfway through the sprint and we're already well ahead. Not sure whether we we're stretching out all that much extra speed than we were previously. All in all, pretty balanced set of upgrades, and now we've got ourselves a good classic rally car.
So let's see if we can spin our money back, shall we? Well, we get a GTS. And an Aston Martin Vulcan, so you know what? Worth it. <laughs> So we're not earning our two million dollars back in cash, but I think it's safe to say that we've already made it back in terms of car value. <laughs> and sometimes that happens. Another Ferrari and a gold waistcoat. We should drip ourselves out after this, shouldn't we? Ah, the chicken suit, just what we needed. There we go, 500k, so that's not bad. <laughs> it's a, a partial recompense. Oh, and another 400k. So, in terms of cash, we basically got half our money back. And in terms of cars, this Aston Martin Vulcan alone gave us pretty much the entire house value back. So, 10 super wheel spins is a pretty worthy investment. Now, once again, faced with a niche category, which we do own a car in, but it's the Jeep Trailcat, and I know from experience that driving that is like driving a meringue. It is not good. So we're going to buy another one. The category is Heavy Hitters, which I don't even understand what that's meant to represent. Generally 4x4s, but then you got something like the Dodge Hellcat Charger in there as well, so I really don't understand the category. However, now could be a good chance to pick up the Range Rover that we had the opportunity to buy earlier on. Unfortunately, the inability to tune it might hold us back a little bit. The most we can do is just drop the tire pressures for now. And we seem to be up against a very variable opposition in terms of other vehicles. It was a odd category to say the least. Hopefully, this thing won't be completely embarrassing and we can at least finish respectably in the first race before we get a chance to upgrade it and hopefully make it easier for ourselves for the next two. And in classic cross-country fashion we're just ruining someone's canola field because <laughs> why not apparently. These race formats really make no sense but never mind. Yeah, well that's fun. We're just jumping through the gardens of the house that we just bought. I guess if we hadn't already discovered it, that would allow us to learn about the existence of that house to buy it. <laughs> Sorry we ruined your garden. Here's two million dollars. Can we move in? <laughs> well, we've managed to hold it together overall and in pretty good position to blast through these goalposts. Go and spin around this corner here. Ugh. Run very wide, but hopefully the others will do similarly. Nope, they took it much better, but can we block them out and get the win still? Yes, we can. <laughs> Just. So we've now upgraded this to be a 799, including off-road tires. We'll see whether or not that comes back to bite us with everyone else also upgrading their heavy hitters again, whatever that means. A bunch of utes ahead of us, it seems. Utes are also not too bad in this. It does mean that we've thrown another, like, 60k at this vehicle. But we will win that back eventually. Having a decent off-road car, especially something around in the A ratings, is quite a valuable investment you're likely to need them for quite a few things. It's a really good rating of cross-country car to be able to work your way through the various races in that particular discipline. I do also have something of a soft spot for the Bowler Wildcat, but I wasn't sure whether or not that was in the heavy hitter classification in the first place. And also it starts at the top end of the A range. It's a really good candidate to upgrade even further, and you can push it into the S1. That's really good for PR challenges in future that are off-road that require a lot of speed, for example. How far can we jump this? Crunch. <laughs> far enough. <laughs> and speaking of jumping, there's going to be lots of that in this championship. <laughs> I recognize this route. 
For some reason they always go really slow down this hill section, we're able to just scream ahead. Probably because they're preparing themselves for that corner, but we just lean against someone instead. <laughs> Crunch our way across the fields here. I like to stay right over here so we crash through a little bit of the river there. But then we're more on the land. And it's still a decent line up to the next corner up here. Some of these corners on the hills are quite wide, unfortunately. You've got plenty of room to run off, at least. And this one here, once again, another jump. And just skip our way across the moors. And the great thing is, is that we're already almost done. This is actually quite a short cross-country race. If you're looking for one to level up your cross-country series quickly, this is a pretty good contender. But generally I'd advise against redoing the same tracks unless you need to for a championship like this, because you want to work your way through all of those that are available. And it seems just as the sun is rising, so too are we crossing the line. And with that, we're 80% of the way through the playlist, and we have our Bugatti Devo unlocked. That's all of the rewards that we get for doing the season, but we need 100% completion, and that means we've still got some unfinished business. As you can see, we're recording this a day before it actually finishes, so we'll have to log in tomorrow and get that great ear skill, but you can take for granted that I'll get that one quite easily. Two street scene events and a seasonal playground, and one more season events. Now, you may remember me just saying that I have a soft spot for the bowler, that, it, that it's a really good car to upgrade further into an S1 rating instead of its native A class. Well, that's what we've done. This next race required an extreme off-road vehicle in S1. So we splashed out an extra 200,000 Oh, crunch, to get ourselves a bowl of wildcat. And then splashed out even further to the tune of over 100,000 more credits to upgrade it to S1. I really don't like this track, racing on the sand. The main point is not to go too wide and too deep into the ocean itself. Try and stay as close to the waterline as you can. Try not to land on top of anyone as you come through a jump. That's one of the reasons I do not like this track, is there are just so many jumps. And funnily enough, when you're in mid-air, you have no control over your car. <laughs> and it's highly variable how the car behaves when you land. So you want to brake quickly after that landing in order to, again, spend as little time in the water as possible. And go screaming past our opponents, jumping through the checkpoint managed to somehow regain control of our car and blast through the dunes and hold it together to cross the line for the first one that was stressful i told kira if we're going to do horizon in the uk we have to make sure it's well defended from the sea <laughs> To de-stress a little bit, we do get another beauty spot. Bamborough Castle, which you can purchase as a player house. It's one of two castles in the game that you can purchase, that and Edinburgh Castle itself. Uh, one costs 10 million and the other costs 15 million, I seem to remember. So you'll be saving up a bit for those. But now, back into the action for the next race. Racing around the quarry, and then through the river. We have done this one recently, I believe getting caught up in all of the pack before we can blast our way through. I will say that while I do love the bowler as a vehicle, and it is fun to drive around, when it comes to the off-road races, the A-Class, I feel, is the sweet spot. Once you start getting into the S ratings, everything is just so fast and so hectic, and your car is just being thrown all over the place, and it's really hard to control. It, it's exhilarating to an extent, but it's also very stressful. You may find yourself having to rewind a whole lot. The 
racing through the water in particular is always annoying because you lose a lot of control over the vehicle and you can't go nearly as fast as you might, might like and it's really hard to see anything and we're being overtaken left right and center so we've got to pull it together for the final section this rally fighter vehicle ahead of us seems to do really well on this that was another option but I don't really don't really like it <laughs> so we went with the one I prefer that's fine my mistake it was actually a quartz regalia D that beat us that time which is a vehicle I've never heard of before but it is very large which probably helps itself through a lot of these areas here that it'll be much heavier get more power down probably also have no idea how powerful it is but we're faced with yet another bouncy map Ooh, which we just managed to get guided back in the lines for that jump <laughs> but ultimately ended up off road so this is what I mean by the amount that you might have to rewind in these races because if you get the slight wrong angle off the jump like this then you'll just be thrown off the track <laughs> and you might just land on top of someone thankfully they seem to be struggling as much as we are now down here it's I'm not sure which is better you can either jump or go through the water in a car this powerful I think jump because you pretty much skip the water traps entirely and then just have to break hard for that corner in a lower category I think your best bet is just to go down through the water area and try and just stay out of the water as much as possible Part of the problem with the off-road races is that you're smashing through all manner of debris and that slows you down every time you hit something. So if you're the one in front, you're the one who's tanking all of these hits and then they get to just drive through the gap that you left. <laughs> so it can be tactical to stay in second place behind someone in order to let them trail break for you. The problem with doing that of course is then you do still have to overtake them eventually. <laughs> It is preferable to just stay ahead if you can. And final sections through a few backyards, across the railway line, through some front yards, <laughs> destroy some fences and gates, blast through someone's poor cabbages, and across the line. <laughs> Such chaos. But it's chaos that gets us the win. And that is all of the seasonal championships for this season. And we get a Jeep Gladiator. Not sure if that's any good, to be honest. I think I'm pretty well kitted out for off-road cars now.